Hello guys, this is Shane with 3D Labs. Today we're gonna to talk about bed adhesion with high temp materials. This is gonna be the first in a series of videos that we promised to release in our last video. And we'd like to focus on bed adhesion in this entire episode. We're gonna talk about some common materials used for bed adhesion that you may or may not heard of. And we're gonna talk about some lesser known ones and some products. Then we're gonna talk about what we do for bed adhesion here at 3D Labs for high temp filaments. So here we have some commonly used things for bed adhesion. The first one being purple glue stick. You probably know it, you probably love it, you probably have heard of it at least if you don't use it. It's the most popular adhesive for 3D printing that I know of at least. It works, it works with materials all the way up to Ultim, Peak, all the way down to PLA, and it works fantastically well. Some of the cons of using glue stick, however, are getting it spread evenly on the build plate. Having a, a perfectly level uh, sheet of adhesive on your build plate is critical to a successful first layer. You don't want peaks and valleys that can actually create uneven forces with materials that like to warp, such as Ultim or even ABS. And this can be a little bit of a pain to apply. Um, there is the tried and true bake and scrape method in which you apply two to three sheets of, or layers of glue stick to your substrate being glass and then you heat that up in the printer for about three to five minutes at 100 degrees Celsius, and you scrape it off with a razor blade and wipe it off. You put a few more layers on, you rinse and repeat that cycle three to five times. It gives you a great first layer to print on with glue, great adhesion, but it's a pain in the neck to do that every single time you wanna do a print, but it does work. Next. ABS juice, you've probably heard of this, ABS slurry. You take a little bit of ABS, you throw it in some acetone and you let it melt over the course of a couple hours or a couple of days and you have a nice goop that you can pour on the build plate, spread it out with a spatula or a brush. And this works absolutely wonderful for ABS, PLA, PETG, filaments of that nature. Um, this starts to fall apart when you print anything high temp polycarbonate, things like that. When you start to get the bed above the glass transition temperature, it seems to lose its effectiveness, at least in our testing. It does not work for high temp filaments. Uh, the next thing you have, if you have a fun mat HD, you may have received a large roll of tape, Kapton tape. Uh, this stuff is great. This is great for anything at about the, the polycarbonate level, I would say, and below. You'll be very successful with this. You can print right on it, or you can put glue stick on it as a separation layer. Uh, some of the cons of this are that uh, it, uh, it breaks extremely easily. It needs to be replaced a lot because when you're scraping those prints off the build plate, you know, if you've got a nice big scraper like the Zortrax one that we use, it just, it, it rips, it tears, it pokes it, but it does work, but it doesn't work on high temp filaments beyond polycarbonate in my experience. What happens is the pulling forces of the Ultem or the, the PEC or the PEAK or whatever it is you're printing will start to peel, they will bond to the tape and the same goes for PEI tape. They will actually start peeling the tape off the bed. They will stick to it. The same thing happens with a PEI sheet adhered to a glass plate with 3M adhesive. That's another popular 3D printing solution for adhesive. Again, that doesn't work with high temp filaments because it will actually make the adhesive that is backing the PEI sheet fail and pull it up and pull it off of the substrate below it. So that does not work. Now there are other products on the market geared for high temp 3D printing, such as this Vision Miner, Vision Miner Nano Adhesive and it works very well uh, in our experience. We, you know, we use it from time to time. Um, as you can see, they, you know, they changed the product a little bit. First, it used to come in uh, an open top bottle like this. Works pretty good. Um, there's not really any cons to it other than it's, you know, it's expensive. Um, now I'm going to talk about what we do here at 3D Labs. I haven't heard anybody else talk about this, um, but this is what we do in house, and it works as good or better than any of the commercial solutions we've tried. Uh, so you may or may not heard of Aquatech. It is a product put out by 3DX Tech. It is a PVA alternative water soluble support. Um, and 
what it's commonly used for is for printing with ABS with water soluble supports. Um, PVA typically doesn't stick to ABS very well because of the, the, uh, the differences in, in print temperatures. The ABS is a little bit too hot and it doesn't really stick to it. This works a lot better and this is not nearly as susceptible to moisture as PVA as well. Um, but anyway, this being a water soluble filament, uh, we, we have taken this and been highly successful with 3D printing high temp materials on a glass build plate by simply dissolving uh, BVOH filament in a mixture of water and alcohol. Now I'll list the exact recipe that we use in the description, um, but typically what we do is I mix, this is a 17 ounce bottle of water. I'll pour out about half of this and I'll fill it up with pure IPA alcohol. Uh, and then I will put about 40 grams of BVOH into that. I will let this dissolve for about two days. Um, sometimes I like to throw a little PVA glue stick in there just for good measure. Shake this up. And this stuff is amazing. It's very easy to spread. Uh, you can use a simple art brush to spread it on the build plate. You get a nice even coat and it works really well for high temp materials. Uh, now I'm going to go over to one of our high temp machines and I'm going to show you how to apply it. Okay, so I'm here at one of our high temp machines. What I'm going to do is pour some of the BVOH slurry, as I like to call it, on the build plate. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to apply. Now I'm going to do this with one hand because I'm holding the camera. Uh, so bear with me as I... What I like to do is I just I pour out a little bit in the middle of the build plate. I take a an acrylic art brush and I just apply that over the area where I think I'm going to be printing. So there you can see it's got a nice sheen to it. And then what I like to do is before I print on this, I will preheat my build plate. I'm gonna preheat this build plate to about, I don't know, let's take it up to 180. Chamber set to 90. Um, and then I will actually let this dry and this will be ready to do a print on. Alrighty, so the print is done. And as you can see, let me just move this out of the way. That is very hot. You can see it did not peel off of the bed at all. Um, I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of hard for me to get my head in there, but that's what it looks like. Um, it absolutely is flat and it's held down. Now we need to get this off the glass or it will break. So I just take my Zortrax spatula and kind of, you, you can see how, how well attached it is. There. So you can see that it absolutely does work. It is very flat. It's probably starting to warp now because the heat is not on it. That's normal we just pried it off the bed. Normally I would have shut the door again real fast, but I'm using one hand to hold the camera. So. And you can see, we'll go ahead and just take this out of the machine. Let's take a look at it. You can see the beautiful surface finish. This is PSU, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, but you can see we've got a really nice first layer and it's just a really nice part.
All right, and we are back. I just cleaned up the Izod bar, the dumbbell, and it looks beautiful. You can see the surface quality on that is very, very nice. Beautiful top layer. So here are some of the other parts that we printed using this adhesion method. Uh, we actually printed a, this is a, about a 10 or 11 inch uh, crescent wrench from Thingiverse and this is printed in Ultim 9085. Now you can see that this adhered to the plate wonderfully using this method. Um, no issues whatsoever though with this, as long as you get that bed hot enough this method works absolutely great. Uh, I think we printed this one at, I think we had the bed at 175 or 180. Uh, so it was just below the TG of Ultim 9085. That seems to be the, the best way to do it in our experience. Uh, so uh, this is the one, this is the other one in the other time lapse that I put in. And you can see this is about six inches across. This is PSU. This was actually printed on a PEI sheet, but with the same solution brushed onto it. Turned out great, it didn't peel, it didn't warp. Like I said, as long as you get that build plate temperature where it needs to be in regards to the glass transition on the material you're working with, you're not gonna have any problems. It's another part that we printed in PSU. No issues with that either. This is actually an Ultim 1010 part that we printed using that. As you can see, it's a cylindrical object though, so it's not real hard to print stuff like this. Cylindrical stuff tends to be very easy to print, but just another example. This is PSU. This is a turbo intake prototype that we found on GrabCAD. Take a look at the bottom. You can see it leaves a little burning residue sometimes. The BVOH, depending on the temperature or how thick you put it on, or maybe the mixture just depends on how much you put in and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, you'll have to experiment it with it. Um, now, your mileage may vary with this. Uh, this is what we do, this is what works for us, but again, your mileage may vary. If you don't like doing things yourself, you want something that does work right out of the box, you know, you can buy one of the commercial solutions. From a business standpoint, it probably makes sense if you're wasting a lot of time mixing your own materials. Okay, so here's the completed bed that we prepped earlier. As you can see, the glue has been baking for some time. Looks nice and even for us. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and do a print. We've got some carbon fiber peak, uh, courtesy of Salve Filament.
Okay, so we've got some parts here that were printed uh, using the bake and scrape technique. Uh, these are some filament samples for a filament supplier, um, some carbon fiber peak. Uh, these were printed uh, standing tall. Really nice surface texture. So these are the ones that were actually printed flat uh, in the time lapse. So we can take a look at those. It looks really nice. Um, like I said, a little tiny bit of uh, outline overlap could probably be increased on that, but uh, you can see that that fat first layer really gets the job done, even though it doesn't look super great, but it, it really, really works good. And then these were printed sitting on the bed like this. And again, that's carbon fiber peak from Solve AM.